Happy 100 million minutes, Mind Sauce. Thank you very much. And, um, sorry, it's not video games. Okay. Inside, as she sat in her room, staring at her wall, she just finished writing in her diary and had nothing to do. Life was boring in the secret annex, but it was better than the alternative. It was all right talking to Peter and Marco, but they were such quiet people, unlike the always active Anne. All of a sudden, a flash of light appeared in the room. Anne jumped back, stifling a scream. Before she could run out the closed door, she noticed that the person who appeared in the flash was not a Nazi officer, but someone who she had never seen before. His clothes were very strange, and his hot hair was in a spiky style that was totally new to her. She stood against the wall, weary of the stranger, but he walked towards her and smiled, extending a hand. My name is Goku, the mysterious stranger said. Anne nervously put her hand in his. He bent down and kissed it softly, then let go. Anne blushed, feeling something she had never felt before go off inside of her. My name is Anne, she replied quietly. I'm sorry for what just happened, Goku told her, but I was caught in a time portal and deposited here. My power cells will recharge soon, but until then I'm stuck here. Anne had no idea what the handsome visitor was talking about, but she played along. Well, sir, she said, you may stay in my room as long as you like. Anne blushed again as she said this and giggled slightly. Goku looked around and then sat on the bed. Thank you for the invitation. I'll be sure to repay you for it soon. Anne did not understand what he meant by that. However, when he spoke, she felt the warmth deep inside of her. She sat by him on the bed, staring at the beautiful man's eyes. Finally, she could stand it no longer. Anne leaned over and kissed the stranger on the cheek. And she pulled back quickly, not sure of what she had done. I'm sorry, she said, as she stumbled to find the right words. The visitor smirked. No, that's quite all right, he replied with a smile, putting one arm around her. You know, you're a very beautiful girl, but I, well... Anne looked at him, troubled. What's the matter? She said with a sweet smile. Goku looked nervous. I... I'm already married. He finally managed to choke out. Anne pulled away from him abruptly. <laughs> she said loudly, almost in tears. I'm sorry. He replied. Anne was furious. Nothing ever goes right. She cried out. I have to go now. My power cells have recharged, said Goku. Anne was in tears by now, staring at the walls so she wouldn't see Goku's face. He smiled a sad smile and disappeared in another flash out of Anne's life forever. Anne never forgot him, though. Not until the end of time. One month. Well, it didn't feel like a month. To Anne Frank, a Jew in hiding from the Nazis, it seemed like a year. One month since the fateful encounter with the mysterious man from another world, who she only knew as Goku. The handsome stranger had stepped through time and into her life, then disappeared without a trace, and was almost sure that she, they'd never meet again, even though not one day passed without her dreaming of him. Little did she know, however, that their lives were tied by the unbreakable red string of fate. It was another boring day in the secret annex, and sat on the bed of her room, writing in her diary. It never occurred to her, however, that this entry would be her last. As she wrote in the quiet attic, there was a loud noise from downstairs. Her heart jumped with both fear and excitement. Was it them? The Nazis? Or could it be? Him? She had no idea whether to run downstairs or to hide. That decision, however, was made for her. Her door flew open, and a tall soldier was visible in the doorway, glaring at her. The cries of her family members and friends were tuned out, as Anne thought only of one thing. She stood up, and followed the soldier out of her room, down the stairs, and into the back of a truck. 
So this is it, she said quietly to herself. I'll never see him, my one true love, ever again. And all those years of hiding, they were for naught. Then Anne realized that she left her precious diary up in her room. She broke loose from the officer and made a dash back into the shop, where he removed a gun from his holster and fired a shot in her direction, and fell to the floor. It was a bad pistol, almost a starter pistol, but still. Anne lay on the floor, feeling searing pain run through her leg, where the bullet had met its mark. The Gestapo officer menacingly moved towards her, grinning, when all of a sudden, there was a blinding flash of light, causing the officer to shield his eyes. A huge cloud of smoke appeared next to Anne, blocking her from the soldier's vision. When the smoke cleared, he was in for quite a surprise. There was Goku! Holding Anne in his arms, standing next to a huge metal capsule. Goku! Cried Anne. You came back for me. Goku smiled. Anything for you, my dear! He said, Our love will never be lost, not until the end of time. The Gestapo officer turned tail and ran, but Goku was too quick for him. After laying Anne on the concrete, he dashed towards the Nazi and knocked him to the ground, unconscious, with only one blow. Nazi scum! muttered Goku as he spit on his enemy's limp, limp body, then returned to Anne. Here, I have something for you, Goku said, as he removed a small bean from his pocket. What on earth is this? asked Dan. Goku smiled, remembering how ignorant she was to what it was everyday life to him. A senzu bean, he said. Just eat it and it'll cure your leg. Dan followed his instructions and popped the bean into her mouth as the wound on her calf magically healed. Now come on, commanded Goku. We got some Nazi ass to kick. Dan jumped on the mysterious Saiyan's back as he launched off into the sky. After only a few moments, the two of them arrived in Berlin. Tanks were parading down the street as Adolf Hitler himself stood on a platform overlooking it all. Stay here, Goku said, dropping Anne into a shaded area under a tree. He then flew straight towards the parade of tanks, fists outstretched, screaming as loud as he could. <laughs> The soldiers below scattered in terror while the tanks tried to aim their cannons at him. He was too quick and nimble for them, however, and opened the hatch of a nearby panzer and then headed inside. After dispatching of the soldiers in control of the war machine, he took the wheel. He fired round after round into the crowds of Nazi soldiers, occasionally firing at the other tanks. After only minutes, there was nothing but a cloud of dust and corpses. Goku emerged from the tank's hatch, smiling now that he had done his duty. When all of the dust cleared, there were only two people remaining on the parade ground. Goku, the Saiyan hero, and Adolf Hitler, the most evil man ever to walk the earth. Anne watched from nearby fearfully as she saw the two men stare at each other for what seemed like hours. Her one true love and her ultimate oppressor. It had come down to this. So, Hitler said jovially, you took out all of the men. However, you aren't going to defeat me. Hitler then jumped down from his platform and down onto the street in front of Goku, pulling a chain gun from the ground nearby. Goku quickly jumped behind a ruined tank as Adolf opened fire. The tank made decent cover, but it wasn't long until it would be torn apart by the hail of bullets. Goku had to act. He dashed out from the side of the tank and flew as fast as he could toward Hitler, who had no time to react. He grabbed the chain gun out of his enemy's hands and snipped it over his knee with ease. Hitler stumbled backwards, shocked at the turn of events. Goku smirked and said, It's come down to this! You and me! Fighting like men! If you admit defeat now, I'll kill you rather painlessly! Goku had the definite advantage. Or so it seemed. Hitler burst into a laugh as Goku looked on quizzically. 
the mustachioed man stood lowly rose into the air as his brown hair and pencil mustache turned a blonde color and his brown eyes turned blue. Goku reeled in horror. Hitler continued laughing and said, Goku! <laughs> You've come here expecting to fight the man man, but instead you found a god! Hitler had become a super saiyan. Anne looked on in awe, not sure what was going on. At first it seemed like her lover would win the battle, but now she was not so sure. Goku now seemed scared of his opponent, and it was for a good reason. Hitler continued to speak. Goku, can't you see? I've reached a power level ten times anything you've ever achieved. Your fate is sealed, weakling. Even though the battle seemed unwinnable, Goku charged in, screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> Every blow he struck was deflected off of Hitler's rock-hard body. Hitler waited for Goku to tire himself out, then raised his fist and punched Goku. And one punch was enough. Goku was knocked across the street into a large propaganda poster of Hitler, thudding to the cold, hard ground. Hitler laughed, thinking that victory was in his hands at last. Goku, however, was not ready to give up. Bruised and battered, he rose from the ground, limping in Hitler's direction. The Nazi leader laughed. <laughs> you still want to fight? Don't you know to give up, boy? You can hardly walk. And you expect to beat me? Conqueror of Europe? Goku ignored Adolf's taunts as he continued to stumble his way forward. Finally, the two arch-rivals were standing face to face. Goku stared Hitler into the eye, then screamed, This is for love! And flew up into the sky, his hair turning blonde, his eyes blue, and an aura of power radiating from him. Hitler looked on in horror at Goku. He had made the ultimate achievement. He had become a super ultra power saiyan. Goku made a cup shape with his hands aiming at Hitler as he belted out the words Kame -ha -me -ha! as a beam of pure energy shot at his enemy disintegrating the Nazi leader's body Goku then collapsed to the ground in a heap exhausted from the fight two years later Anne and Goku had finally reached the date of their wedding. After the battle, Anne and Goku destroyed the time machine and took a boat to Australia. They changed their names and lived new lives, ready to start over. The two young people looked into each other's eyes as they kissed, as the Reverend Scarecrow as the Reverend pronounced them man and wife. Finally, it seemed Anne was at peace. And they would always be together until the end of time. Fucking stupid! Stupid! Stupid!